So today I'm going to be talking on contrast and as breast MRI, a case-based review. So before I go to my cases that we all on the same page, I'd like to just tell you a little bit about the descriptors, what we use on MRI. So when you see a contrast and as MRI, you either call it the lesion of focus or you call it a mass or you call it a non-mass enhancement. So what is a focus? Focus is any lesion which is less than 5 mm and it, you cannot define the morphology. Mass on the other hand has convex margins and you can see it in all the planes and you can see it even on the plane scan. So anything which is not a focus or a mass is a non-mass enhancement. So when you are talking about a mass, we need to tell about the shape and the margins. The shape can be oval, round or irregular. I think the names themselves are very self-explanatory. And the margins can be either circumscribed or non-circumscribed. Non-circumscribed is further divided into irregular or speculated, just like mammography. Then we look at the enhancement pattern. So this is unique to MRI. So the enhancement of masses can be either homogeneous, heterogeneous, rim enhancement or dark internal septations. So if you have homogeneous enhancement, think of a benign lesion. If it is heterogeneous, think of a malignant lesion. Rim enhancement, you can see both in benign and malignant. And dark internal septations are most commonly seen in fibroadenomas. So always look at the enhancement patterns also. Non-mass enhancement on the other hand is divided according to the distribution as focal. By focal, we mean it's occupying less than a segment. Linear is self-explanatory. It's a line. You can have a branching pattern. That means it's enhancement in a duct. Segmental is a triangular shape of enhancement with the apex pointing towards the nipple. And this represents a TDLU. Regional will occupy a larger area than a segment. Multiple regions is more than uh, a larger area with normal breast tissue in between. And diffuse is involving a large part of the breast. So linear and segmental are pointers towards malignancy. Focal, regional, multi-regional or diffuse, you can see in benign or malignant cases. So like masses, even in non-mass enhancement, we look at the internal enhancement pattern which can be homogeneous, heterogeneous, clumped or clustered ring-like. Homogeneous we can see in benign conditions. The remaining three we normally see in malignancies, but a country like ours, clustered ring-like is also seen in cases of tuberculosis. And then what do we have are the kinetic curves. So this is the software after we've acquired the dynamic contrast images, we divide the contrast into two phases. The initial phase, which is the first two minutes, and the delayed phase is two to six minutes. In the initial phase, again, you have a slow, medium or fast version of contrast. So what do we mean by this? Slow is when the lesion enhances less than 50% of what it was before contrast. Medium is between 50 and 100. And fast is more than 100%. So the fast ones are associated with malignancies. The medium and slow are normally seen in benign conditions. Having said this, you will see cases which show uh, malignant and they show slower enhancement. I'll show that in my talk as we go along. The delayed phase is divided into persistent, plateau and washout. Persistent we see normally in cases of benign conditions, but you have malignant conditions like invasive lobular carcinoma, DCIS. They can also show you a persistent curve. Then we have the plateau and washout, which you can see in malignant conditions. Plateau can also be seen in benign. So this is a general overall what I'm telling you, but just remember always morphology trumps over kinetics. So always look at the morphology of a lesion, which is very, very important. And then we look for associated findings like neoangiogenesis. You can see this in malignancies or any vascular malformation. Look for architectural distortion, which can be the only pointer towards invasive lobular carcinoma look for nipple involvement, and then look for this hook sign. This is what happens when there is an invasive ductal carcinoma, which is causing a lot of desmoplastic reaction. It is basically engulfing the Cooper's ligament. And so what happens? The pectoralis major gets hooked. It's like a tent. So this doesn't mean that the muscle is involved. This is just that the Cooper's ligaments are getting involved. 
The only time we call pectoralis involvement is when you have enhancement and the same goes for skin. Only enhancement of the skin and not only edema is skin involvement. And now what the, with the new biorats, which is going to be coming up, they're including this very good thing that is a T2 signal. So remember, as a general rule, T2 dark lesions are malignant. There are lots of exceptions. I'll show you that. And T2 bright lesions are generally benign. But again, there are lots of uh, exceptions, like a case of mucinous carcinoma, that will also be bright. But for you, the take-home right now is... T2 dark is malignant, T2 bright is benign.